How are you guys? This is uh, JP Sarri. Uh, today I'm doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. And this is going to be actually my first review of a book. Uh, in this case, this is for the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus. As you can see right there, the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, um, of course, by Marvel, um, Marvel Comics. And this is based on the art of David Michelini, uh, Todd McFarlane. Actually, David Michelini, this is the, the writer of uh, all the comics that are um, in this in this omnibus. This um, this omnibus are great for those who are interested to look into the old comics. Uh, one of the reasons why I, I got this omnibus, this, this book, is because, you know, I'm a fan of comics. I grew up with a lot of these comics. Um... One of the reasons why we into statue collecting, mostly the superhero statue collecting, is because we have a passion for these characters and for these books. Um, growing up back in the 80s um, with these comics, uh, in the 90s, I was always impressed. I was always uh, surrounded by a lot of this, this, the stories of these characters. And Spider-Man was one of my favorite ones. And I like this version, actually. I like the... Uh, that they come up with this idea, this omnibus is that as the um, Marvel is doing, and as you can see, this is a very very thick book. Uh, you're looking at more than uh, some some around 850 pages or more. It's very thick. It's very heavy. It's great quality, and um, it's it's a good way to collect things. You know, most of my comics, I collect a lot of comics, uh, mainly on digital. Most of my collection is on digital. I have a lot of. Uh, digital um, comics store and of course in my computer uh, in my devices and I read them constantly but um, if I want to but there are a lot of these stories are not ex they haven't come out yet on digital media um, but you know they're so great you know that actually having them in this format allows me to kind of recreate or go back to the way it was growing up and um, you know, it, it is an amazing thing that I can go back and have the feeling I can read it in my hands. Uh, for some people, they love that, the old format. A lot of the, the younger generation don't have that experience, so they don't know how it feels. So it was great, um, you know, going into a lot of the statues, you know, uh, loving my statue, my collection. Um, I, I, you know, I started thinking about all this, whole comics, and, you know, uh, feeling, you know, I was looking at it, and I was thinking, wow, you know, I want to go back to what really started it all, what really... Uh, create that um, this pop culture and I decided to start going back into the comics so before I start talking let me show you this because this actually is a review I want to go through and I want to show you pages of this and as you can see this is actually this is not the uh, exclusive there's an exclusive version for those that they, they buy it directly from the distributors uh, actually has the black um, you know black suit of spider-man this is the red one I wasn't crazy about the black one I really like the original I like the original red and blue and uh, I like the way it is. This is very simple. That's the only thing. And let me just kind of present this. It's a very, very thick, heavy book. As you can see right here on the side, it's Marvel Omnibus. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, uh, you know, the, this is based on the stories of David Michelini, great writer. Uh, Tuck McFarlane. Tuck McFarlane, I'm sorry. And here in the back, you can see this is for the first time. Uh, more than 800 pages of uh, pivotal Spidey uh, material uh, by groundbreaking creators David Michelini and Todd McFarlane are collected under one cover. There is more than 30 issues right here. As you can see, those are the covers of all these issues. Very famous, number 300 right there. Um, one of the greatest artists, uh, some of the greatest art uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. Is, it's actually here all in one simple uh book and, and a great quality book um so it, it, let me just go in let me take this out for you normally you open it right here it's a great great quality book uh normally i take this the the cover out uh as you can see right here very very thick book and it's just right there just in plain white this is the amazing spider-man omnibus and let me just take this out uh, I'm just gonna take the cover out because you know I really don't like um, just put it on the side right here on the side as you can see right says Marvel Omnibus the Amazing Spider-Man there's nothing in the back ooh got some little dirt that's fine just put it on the side let me just go through it and let's go in uh, you can see the quality is great this is actually one of the best omnibuses the, the best books collections uh, I'm amazed that Marvel makes real good collections as you can see there is a cover 
collecting Amazing Spider-Man number 296 to 329 and a Spectacular Spider-Man annual number 10. And as you can see, the, here it shows the writer, uh, the, the, the artist, the, the writer says this is the art of Dave, David Michelini. If you know David Michelini, uh, for those that don't know him, uh, he was actually a writer, uh, started writing back in the 70s um, for DC mainly, and then he went to work for uh, Marvel Comics. He was the creator of many of the stories of Iron Man, um, uh, great creator. He created many of the characters of a lot of the things that happened around that time with Iron Man, the different suits that he used to have. He was the one that came with the ideas. Actually, he was the one that created the, the character of Rhodey, um, the friend of, uh, of course, um, Iron Man. And uh, many stories, and he was a great, that's one of his greatest, he's known for that time, for that time period. But also then he started working at Spider-Man back in 1987, all the way to 1994. Um, but during this time, that's when actually Todd McFarlane started actually working for Spider-Man. Of course, everybody knows this character of uh, uh, the Spider-Man that he actually um, draw and create but actually was based on the and the on the writing of David Michelin. It's so important. I think the most important thing to remember is that you cannot have good art without a good writer. And that is something that we miss in nowadays in a lot of the comics. There's not great um, writers out there that really write good stories and that's one of the problems that we face nowadays that yeah we have great artists that kind of they draw a spectacular we have ways where in the computer animation uh, they can just color in a marvelous way but the story lacks and yet something that we need to go back to it well the, the industry needs to go back to it and as you can see there's a big the pencilers are the ones that made the drawing you see Todd McFarlane is the main um, the main artist doing this, but also we got Alex Saviak. Um, back in the 70s, back in the 80s, I'm sorry, he was one of the main, um, uh, he drew a lot of Spider-Man art. Um, um, he is actually kind of represents the old school of drawing Spider-Man before Todd McFarlane came about, aboard. Eric Larson, one of the, I love his art, I always like, I think he, the way he, um, um, the art, his art was much better than Todd, uh, after Todd left, I think he got even improved a lot better, the character, um, um, but in, in, in this issue, he just, I think he's just, um, there's just three issues that he's part of, um, number 324, 327, and 329, and also we have Colleen Doran, um, this is, she's, she's, a, she's um, an, a writer and an artist, uh, I'm not really a fan of her art, but she's very famous, she's, she's been an artist back since, back in the, in the, in the 70, I think 70s and 80s, um, and as you can see, there's anchors, there's a lot of people involved into this, the color is, uh, and there's a lot of people involved editors and um, uh, it's a lot of people involved into this art so let me just go in uh, here uh, has a uh, glossary I think a content of all the different books it start back in 1988 and finishes at in 1990 um, so there's right you can see there's like two years here of the story of the amazing Spider-Man as you can see right here I'm going to go try to go fast on this because it's a very thick book. Here's the first art. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man started as number 296. And as you can see, this art, this actually was Alex Saviak. Uh, and this is actually the main, the old school of Spider-Man. Uh, this is the old style that was used back then. And as you can see, um, the art was very basic. You know, it was great. You know, I grew up into in this style, so for me, it was it was normal. And he was when he was wearing actually still wearing the black suit. After this is happens after the events of um, actually the what then uh, the you know the alien suit that then became Venom. Um, this is a great story. He's a newlywed at that by that time, so there's a lot of um, um, of things happening around this time. Well, you can see right here, um, really, it's just basically, it's the basic art that was done prior to Todd McFarlane. Um, you know, it's very simple. It's simplistic in many ways. It's beautiful. It's great. Um, there's no really reasons to complain about the way it was presented. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of, you know, this was actually... Um, it was great, you know, uh, this is something that we all knew about, you know, this is something that we were used to. Um, the technique that was used on that time, it was just, um, uh, the colors were great, you know, the image was great. Um, you know, there was not really too much to worry about. Here is when everything started going 
in a different direction. This actually right here, number 298, this became the first Todd Mark Farland um, drawing. Um, and here's when we can start seeing a change in the way things are presented. As you can see, the webbing, this is the spaghetti webbing that actually he, he changed the way people saw Spider-Man. Before that, it was just a simple, um, the, the web that was kind of, you know, just two lines, you know, with crosses. This became the new webbing that everybody learned to love and everybody enjoy, you know. And you can see in the beginning, um, still, Todd McFarlane, his art was more similar to the old school. As you can see in the, in the way he draw. Uh, was still still a little, you know, regular or basic, as you can say. He was still, uh, but, you know, the webbing was a different thing. And actually, he was doing something that anybody else was doing. There was a lot of close-ups. And you're going to see that the more we get into this comics, the more we get farther into it, you're going to see that there's an evolution of Todd, the way his art started improving and getting much, much better. It was just improving uh, with every every part here you can see this is chance a uh, very common uh, uh t it was a it was a killer for hire back in the in the, in the 80s and 90s very kind of, he was in many of the issues of spider-man and many um uh, even eric larson drawing and i love what how eric did um eric larson did it but as you can see there is an evolution and the art is starting proven as you can see um this is actually still you know with the black suit but this is when things get much, much better. This is actually the first image of Benham right here before number 300. So you can see Benham. And, um, but here we're going to start number 300. Very famous number 300, the 25th anniversary of the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, here's with the black suit. This became a, a really a game changer for the industry. This was a very, very sold out uh, comic. It sold millions of copies. And this art changed the way people were looking at Spider-Man. As you can see, his art changed. And actually, in the previous one, he was actually just um, uh, drawing. Uh, he was not inking his work. But on this one, actually, um, you know, Todd, Todd, actually himself, he did the inking. He, uh, he did his own inking. So he brought a dimension that was unseen at the time. The art was completely different you know he changes you can see his star his style start changing he start moving forward instead of staying trying to imitate what was done he started adding more stuff and as you can see here um there was a lot of things that were done this close-ups this images the body uh, everything the body you know that's called you know the way he recreated physique it was it was it's spectacular you know you can see he he's well, well known for his uh close-ups and you know one thing i can say about david michelini his writing was great, and when he combined with Todd, they created uh, a story that was beyond, beyond anything else that we've seen. It's like he went back to basics with, um, with Spider-Man. One thing that we can say about Spider-Man is that um, the story, you know, we always knew him. He was a teenager boy trying to make it up, but, you know, as soon as he got married uh, in, this, in the 80s, you know, they decided to marry them, and, you know, in this part of the story, he's actually confronting a lot of situations in his life where he has to go through, through you know, through emotional battles, you know, trying to, to you know, to make things work with his wife that, you know, she's becoming, you know, a very famous model, and she's becoming very uh, popular, and she's making more money than he is, so he is a battle between a you know it's a couple trying to make ends meet and make it work and you know he went back to the suit as you can see in number 300 back to the um, original and you know the color this is being remastered you know all this has been remastered what that do that does that mean uh, it means that actually it's not like it's being repainted it's that actually it go through a process where they actually make the make them look at this as it's as it look when they actually draw them for the first time and they color them for the first time so in other words, it's like trying to go back to the way it was. Um, one thing happened with a lot of comics is you know when you after year, many years the type of quality paper that they use, the paper that is used, um, they tend to lose color. You know, unless you keep them, you know, safe. And you can see had silver sable right there, very famous back then. Um, and that she never looked better um, than and when Todd McFarlane actually was drawing her. Um, she was great. You know the way they presented. Um, 
there was an evolution, you know, and as you can see the evolution and even the artists are getting much, much, much better, you know, Todd. Um, the the close-ups were great, the images, the figures, there was something about Todd and his drawing that they were and somehow a little cartoony, but at the same time they have a lot of character and uh, make him look more mature, you know, in one way or the other. You know, we don't see just... Um, you know, we see a lot of it. It varies a lot of motion in this art, as you can see right there. Uh, from from the way he presented the different, um, you know, it was basic. Before of that, they were just simple. You know, they got the simple boxes where everything was drawn. But in this case, he he created bigger boxes or smaller boxes. So there was a infusion, I would say, of different things. So every when you turn the page, you 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 were not, you know, you were it was not you were expecting something you know, unusual. That was the thing. That's the reason why it pushed actually the sales for Spider-Man because, you know, you didn't know exactly what was going on. Many people weren't fans of the art of Todd back then because he was changing the rules. But, you know, the truth is that, you know, the rules, you know, they were made in, a, you know, he was making things better or more interesting. I'm, I'm going to tell you myself, I was not as a fan of Todd because, you know, of course, like I said, I didn't grow up with Todd. I grew up back in the 80s reading other other artists. So it was a shock, you know, it was a culture shock trying to enter into the new thing. But it was at the same time interesting. And now over the years, I can really appreciate what, you know, he did with this art. And let me look at this. You know, you can see MJ. I'll tell you one thing. You know, nobody else, nobody else before, um, you know, uh, Todd drew MJ as pretty and as beautiful as Todd did. You know, he really emphasized the curves and everything on her. So it was, it was, it was great the way he did it. He was a great artist, you know, and all and his own right and many things that he did. But you know, the writing was so important. The combination between uh, the Michelini's writing and uh, uh, McFarlane's drawing create this character. So it was an amazing thing to see, you know, really and enjoy everything. As you can see, Sandman going actually was when he was actually trying to make, you know, starting to be on the on the on the on the right side, trying to do good things in that part of the story. And as you can see, the story evolves and moves and it was a serious thing you know even the story was good it was funny it was quirky at the time same time but it, it was also full of um uh, uh, of serious things that were said you know and that's what really kept this comic going in a way that you know we never seen before it was great as you can see right here there's an inclusion of um um let me see what where is that you can see beautiful mj right there um, probably I don't know, I passed it, but here as you can see the in this case the the prowler. And if you know the story of the prowler, this was actually a character that was created back in the in the sixties by um, Stanley and Bushima. But um, actually, if you really look at it, a lot of people have said this actually is the inspiration that created Spawn. And like here is Todd McFarlane drawing this character that also is African American. Um, you know, and you know he, he just looks like you know Spawn. If you change the color and you add some change to him, you know, pretty much you're looking at Spawn. Um, that became pretty much his most important character uh, in the story of Todd, you know, that really changed who he was, you know, uh, when he went and, you know, you know, went to Image and create, you know, uh, create um, one of the founders of Image Comics. And as you can see, the art start getting better. The more in deep we get into this comic book, you know, you can see the art getting better and better and better. And as you can see, we haven't even get to half of the book. And we just... This is just art after art, beautiful art, MJ, color, because being remastered, they, they, they have improved the quality of the color, it, it shines better, good quality paper, this is going to last you, this is, um, uh, you know, it's going to last you forever, as you can see, the black cat, you know, um, it, it's just amazing, you know, the art and the story is funny, I, I highly recommend this story to anybody that is interested you know somebody like like me this is jonathan caesar actually there was the guy that was talking mj back in many of the issues um crazy psycho guy um and as you can see uh we have a lot of uh, uh, of great characters the chameleon right here you know it, it is it is a lot of great things that we saw in the story great great art um as you can see there's let me just show you um this page right here uh, beautiful the way he did the chameleon right there but look at this the color it's amazing 
you know, the, 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 the everything, you know, his heart improved tenfold, you know. Since we saw him starting until this point, we can see that the addition of a lot of, uh, the, you know, things in the background, everything he was doing, you know, he was he was just doing it. You know, he was doing his thing. Todd was actually on the roll, but this time with his art and look at CNJ right there, beautiful. And uh, everything was full of color, you know, everything that was done. That's when uh, MJ was kidnapped but by Jonathan Caesar. Um, uh, you know, great story. You know, we see the, the, the battles, you know, Aunt May right there. Um, uh, look at this. Look at this. You know, the art here is just amazing. You know, there's many, an inclusion of many characters into the story. You know, good characters, bad characters. Um, uh, you know, the Taskmaster looked good on that, you know. Not, not a fan of the face, but, you know, the body was great, you know. Uh, you know, Todd, he did, oh, this is a uh, beautiful image of Spidey. You know, the R was great, you know. Todd, you know, I'm not going to tell you one thing. I love the way, actually, Eric Larson uh, developed the character after he left. After, you know, he took over after Todd, you know, left um, Spider-Man. And I think he improved it even more. Um, but, you know, it just... As you can see, there is a, there is a lot of things in this book. I can tell you this: it's a lot of great images, page after page after page. You can read this for hours on end. You can read it, go back to it. You know, the art here is amazing. It's outstanding. You know, you're not gonna find anything else as good as this. Just Mysterio right there, beautiful. You know, beautiful representation of Mysterio. Um, the Green Goblin, you know, all that, you know, Green Goblin, magnificent, you know, you can tell, I can tell you this, the art here, the way it was represented, uh, right, I can, I can see that, the, the Green Goblin, amazing, and on this, we have the Green Goblin, you know, fighting the Hop Goblin, this is a very um, iconic um, um, cover, number 312, you know, it's just, all this, all this, you know, you know, it's just page after page after page. All you see is the art evolving, this close-ups, it getting better, uh, the lizard right there, you know, it's just, you know, you can see the art evolving, getting better, improving, you know. It's just an amazing experience, you know. Some of the best art of Todd McFarlane is here. Um, you know, I really, a lot of people, you know, I, I love um, um, you know, I have the, the Spider-Man by Kota Vukia based on the art of Tarkmar Farling and, you know, all this is started here. As you can see, everything here, as you can see right there, there's a cool looking Venom. The tongue is not there because actually the tongue was not created by the tongue. Actually, Eric Larson was the one that introduced the tongue, slippery tongue on, on Venom. And that is now the, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a landmark, I could say, or it's a, one of those features that everybody under knows about that, but you know what Todd did, he didn't have that. Um, great, great art, as you can see. You know, honestly, it gets better. The more you get into the book and read the book and the stories, the evolution of that, the conflicts and, and the marriage, you know, and the family uh, on May trying to stay away from everything, uh, from you know trying to give the space to Peter and 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 Jay to sort of things out in their marriage. It's it just, it's just the story is just. It's fantastic, you know, everything you do, everything you go, and I can go hour after hour, I can be here forever, uh, you can see right there, you can be there forever, you know, trying to, the scorpion right there looking good, you know, he is the, you know, the way that he drew the scorpion was magnificent, give him so much, he looked meaner looking now when he was drawn by, by that, also he, in this stories, you know, as you can see right there, he went back, yeah, you know, he was a little, you know, risque. I can tell you, with sometimes when he draw MJ, there was a risque situation. But you know, this is a couple. There's some. They're newlyweds. They're, they are dealing with issues and their marriage. You know, trying to stay afloat as a, as a young couple. And you know, this is actually when actually Spider Man went back to college uh, through his books. You know, going back to trying to make you know to you know improve his finances. Um, the Rhino. Uh, you know, I'm not a really. A, I was never a fan of the way he drew Rhino, but you know, he was. Cool. You know, he has his own way to drawing characters. Some of them have stick around, like a scorpion. Some have not. But you know what? Uh, you know, he brought something different to the table. And the more we get into the book, and you can see there we still have a quarter of the book to go. The more he got into it, the better it gets. The better his art gets. The busier it gets. The art gets better. 
you know, MJ and she looks prettier, you know, much pretty every time. The way she, he does it, you know, more defined. His art gets better, you know. You know, the writing also gets him it's improved. So like they are working together and they're making things work. Uh, Michelini and Todd and everybody else, the ink, you know, whoever was inking and the, the, the colorist, they were doing a great job. You know, you can see a Silver Sable was a big part of the story. You know, the story improves, improves time after time after time it is a great story as you can see here is captain america great captain america this is number 323 you know the way he did it um and the art is just getting in a you know it's getting much much better um you know the the art you know everything the way he did the the figure the physics you know i can keep saying things you know the art there's no other way you know and you see this is a great great image of cap right there he looks good there um, it's just fantastic, you know, there's no other way, you know, the art was fantastic, and now here's when we're going to start seeing the difference, uh, Eric Larson, actually, this actually, I think this is number 324 is one of his, I think this is his fist, her first, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is the first, uh, time where he participate in the story, um, when he, the, the first issue that he did with Amazing Spider-Man, and as you can see, Eric Larson, um, you know, he he started and started trying to copy, trying to be. A lot of people say that he copied after Todd. Yeah, he did a lot of it because in reality, Todd, you know, changed the industry and the way people were perceiving the art. But as you can see in his art, as you can see this jawline, that's very Eric. That's Larson's to his stop. If you really change the face, make it green, and give a little, you know, thing on top of here on his face, he looks. He will be. He will look like you know the Savage Dragon. You know, it's just Eric Larson is still at his not at his best yet because I love the way he did it after he did the departure of Todd McFarlane. I love the way he the art, the way he did the sinister the Sinister Six. He did it great. You know, the return of the Sinister Six. He did a great job, and as you can see, this is very Eric, and you can see um, his art improving and getting better uh, still. Um, as you can see, it, it, you know, his image is very um, physical. Uh, as you can see, it's very um, in your face. That was something that I can say about Eric. Um, and as you can see right there, you know, he still, the way he did the eyes and everything, the jawline, everything, it, it, looks, it, it looks fantastic. You know, I always loved the way he did it and actually how he improved it. But he's still, you know, this is the first issue. He's still going after... Um, you know, Todd, so in reality, his art in some moments was not as great, you know, this is great, the physicality, not crazy about the face, and in some moments, he feels that he was lacking, some of the art was lacking, um, but, you know, he, he got better, he was learning also to do a good job, and, you know, I like the way he did the eyes and everything, and I can continue on and continue on, and, you know, the way he did it, and, you know, we're going back now to the stories, and, we're going back to Todd's art, and you know, it just, I can tell you one thing, you know, there's no better um, artist than the ones that actually came out back in that that period of time, in my personal opinion. They were great artists, they were great draw, you know, people drawing, they, they still were a lot of good writers writing, and as you can see right here, this is actually the art by Colleen um, uh, Doran, and I'm not really crazy about the way, um, you know, um, she portrays everything. It's like she is a little more classical. Her art was more classical, more like you know the the ones that we were that we used to do, what we grew up with um, back in the eighties. So it was nothing special to me, you know. But it was there, you know. That was the time actually where Todd was really, really making it, um, and they were so famous. And you know, before a few years after that, you know, pretty much they went and created Image Comics. Was one of the co-creators of the Image. And as you can see, there is a uh, here the there is more and you can see number 327 right here and that actually this is again this is eric larson you know by this time you know todd is so sought out that actually he's not even able to do a lot of the art um himself you know he's busy with other projects so you know somebody had to take over and actually this is not the best uh the magneto that actually created eric larson wasn't the best drawing uh in my personal opinion but you know, you know, it just it was a lot of challenge. This went, uh, it became, it, it was so popular that this was a monthly uh, magazine. And the time that Todd took and the uh, Michelini were working on it, it became uh, 
at two weeks, uh, every other week we have an issue coming out. It was so popular, everybody. The demand was so high that it be, it became a, uh, a pretty much a bi-weekly um, release. You know, so the work was heavy. You know, trying to do and trying to keep up with all this art. You know, it is a lot of pressure. You know, and as you can see, um, right here, um, you know, Eric is doing his best job, and he did great things. I can say, you know, I love the way he he presented Spidey, the way he did the coloring, everything, all the explosion of things happening around the same time you know here's when actually he started getting much much better much better in his art still you know they're still limited you know still not as good as that but i think you know after todd left you know he became more in tune with it. one thing i always look about um and i would like for another omnibus to come out a second omnibus that presents eric larson's work uh, as you can see, you know, like they did with the X-Men, they have two different volumes. It will be great. You can see all the lines, everything, you know, it's all in your face. Eric was always in your face, everything. So every time you turn a page, you can see something mar marvelous. And as you can see, here is another story, Amazing uh, Spider-Man, as you can see with the, the gray Hulk, you know, uh, very cool looking Hulk, you know, not the best looking, but, you know, it, you know, drawn by uh, Todd, you know, it's just... You know, it's just it's just different. You know, looking at all this is 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 pretty much uh, it's a different thing. You know, I love the way it was done. You know, uh, there's no other way. You know, I can tell you one thing. I can you know I'm already taking forever just to do this video, but you know just to look at it. You know, just to look at it. You know, look at all this art. You know, how can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? You know, and as you can see, and there is a lot of bonuses. You know, there's some wacky stories right here. Crazy. This is the Batman. You know, and the guy looking like the Joker, you know, there was a back in the day where they make a lot of jokes between DC and Marvel and that was the battle, you know, as you can see Spider-Ham, you know, versus the Raven, the Hunter, you know, funny, you know, it's, it's just back in the day, you know, they were doing all kind of crazy stuff. There was a way to do things. And here's a biography. Actually, this is from David Michelini. He writes down the reason why he got into comics and it's a very nice to to see that, you know, that actually... Uh, honor is given to those that deserve it and I think David deserves an honor even though we we see this comments and we see this art and actually there's the, the this are um, arts actually by Todd McFarlane you can see beautiful this is to honor Todd but also to honor David Michelini and his writing that actually without David Michelini I don't think Todd would be able to to you know he would be able to draw but not be able to create the stories that became iconic um, for uh, you know for all of us growing up and you know it's the Dazzlers you can see right there Iceman, beautiful right there. The Dazzler again, you know, Paladin. I know, you know, we haven't seen him. I don't think I haven't seen him in years. It's the Marvel Tales, you know, also, you know, a lot of the, the this covers were created by McFarlane, you know, just, you know, it's just art after art. You can see the Juggernaut, you know, the X Men, um, you know, the Marvel Tales. You know, it's just the art after art is just an amazing copulate, you know, copulation or, you know, it compiles, I'm sorry, everything that was done by this great artist. You know, you can see the Silver Sable again. And as you can see, this is a very iconic image that has been used a lot, uh, as you can see. And uh, it's just amazing. And here you can see this is actually the the, post, the, 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 the one, the cover that I already showed you right there. Uh, and actually, the, the scope just comes with the black one. So actually, nowadays you can find them, and that's it. You know, it's just, it's all I can tell you about this is... This art is amazing. You know, everything that was done back in the day, it, it was an amazing thing. I highly recommend this book. You know, you cannot go wrong with this omnibus. You know, if you're a fan of uh, Spider-Man, I recommend it to you. If you're a fan of Tug McFarlane, I recommend it to you. Uh, you know, the you know normally when they come out, they are the price. Or what is this? Oh, supposedly when they get this came out back in 2011, you know, and this was actually the suggested price in the United States was $99 and $112 in Canada. You know, I bought it for a lot less. I can tell you that. I bought it for a steal uh, online. You can go online. You can find them for a great price. You want to get into it. I recommend it to you. If you're not a fan of Todd, you know, I don't think this is going to change your mind because it's Todd all the way through. Um, but if you're a fan of his art, it is a must-have for anybody. 
that is willing. And uh, I can tell you one thing: be open-minded, because a lot of young people I, I know that they 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 idolize a lot of the things that we talk good about. But when they get into it, they don't see the thing. You're not gonna see the same coloring as you see in new comics, of course. The new coloring nowadays is is is, is out of out of this world. Something that if I was a kid reading a comics and I look at the color that is used today, I would be surprised. But the writing is there. The writing is better than anything. The stories make sense. And the story of Spider-Man makes sense. That's when he is getting married, trying to make ends meet, trying to move forward in the world and trying to keep his, uh, you know, his, his livelihood, his life, you know, his wife, his family, uh, trying to keep his job, trying to keep, you know, you know, trying to you know, keep you know Manhattan, New York, New York City safe as a superhero doing the right thing. So this is a great story. I highly recommend it to anybody. And uh, I have more omnibuses that I'm gonna review. Um, it's a different thing, you know. Besides the statues, this is actually going to the source of what this hobby is all about. You know, without this character, they cannot be. The, we cannot have this hobby. We cannot just have this um, collecting. Yeah, we can collect other characters of other worlds, but mainly a lot of this started with these characters. You know, with Marvel, with DC characters, and Spider-Man. You know, change change the way we see pop culture and a lot of things. Superheroes like this. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, highly recommend it. If you're interested in getting this book, the best place to go is Amazon, or you can go to uh, to eBay or many other websites. Actually, I uh, actually I purchased these, uh, you know, not on eBay. And I didn't purchase it on Amazon. I purchased uh, another vendor that actually had it on on pretty much on, uh, you know, just la you know last minute sale. They had some great sales. Uh, there's other. Uh, companies that are doing it and I don't know there's many many retailers that are selling you Barnes and Nobles you can get in for a great great deal uh, I pay half of what it was uh, the retail price so I'm happy with it I think it was a good investment and I'm sure you can find it for even less than that if you really look um, you really look very uh, thorough you can find it for a lot less so good luck finding it if you're interested and um, thank you for watching leave your comments below um, you know you like and subscribe and you know you know if you have any comments just just leave them there you know any suggestions any questions you feel free to ask I'm ready to always answer questions so take care my friends and I'll see you around have a good one